A 340 megabyte moving head disk drive. It plays an important role in storing vast amounts of information. In fact, the 340 megabyte moving head disk drive is presently incorporated into many different types of switches and computer equipment. Occasionally, some units will require replacement. Before replacing any moving head disk drive, always read both the proper manual and all of the local instructions in case of any changes in the unit's replacement procedures. In addition, make sure a replacement drive has been secured and is at room temperature. Uh, Rita, why don't you sit it right over there for now and stick around because I'm going to need you in a little while. To begin, the disk file controller, or DFC, that governs the affected disk drive must be removed from service. Then check the terminal to find out which other drive units are in the same DFC. After opening the door to expose the unit, press the start button located on the front of the drive itself. The start LED will flash, then extinguish, indicating the disk has spun down. Then spin down any other drives that are controlled by the same DFC. Again, wait for the start LED to extinguish. Next, remove power to all of the MHDs in the same DFC series by pressing the off switch associated with each drive unit. When this happens, check to make sure that both the alarm and off LEDs are lit. Now, the DFC itself must be powered down. After locating the DFC power control pack in another cabinet, Press the off switch and check to make sure both the off and the alarm off LEDs are lit. Return to the drive unit that will be replaced and locate its circuit breaker, which is next to the front of the drive unit. Flip the switch to the off position. This will disconnect all power to the drive unit. Once accomplished, go around to the rear of the cabinet frame and disconnect the cables from the rear of the drive unit. First, unplug the power cable by removing the ground lead, then the cable itself. Second, disconnect all of the ribbon cables from the connectors. Be sure to note their original connector designations. And third, remove the DC ground lead. Now return to the front of the cabinet and locate the locking lever. Then, with a screwdriver, lift the locking lever until it releases. Slide the drive unit out as far as it will go. Now the drive is ready to be lifted out. Because the unit weighs approximately 70 pounds, two people may be required to carry it. Press the lock releases on the rails and pull the drive forward until it clears the tracks. Gently set the drive down on a nearby work surface. Be careful to keep any fingers from getting caught under the drive when setting it down. Then remove both of the side rails from the unit by unfastening all of the screws that hold them in place. Transfer the rails to the new drive unit. Make sure they are both properly secured by fastening all of the screws. After attaching the rails to the unit, be sure to perform the following procedures before installing the new drive into the cabinet. First, remove the top cover from both the new and old drive units by unfastening all of the screws that hold them in place. And locate the defect table 
that is stored inside the new drive unit. Make sure that two copies are made of this document for future reference. Next, check to see if the new drive is properly optioned by comparing the settings of the old unit with the new unit. Now place the original defect table back inside the drive unit. And record the unit's head serial number onto one of the copies of the defect table. When finished, attach it to the exterior of the top cover. Doing so will allow for easier access for any future reference. Next, place the top cover back on the unit. Make sure it is properly secured to the drive unit by reattaching all of the screws. Finally, remove the logic plug from the old drive unit and place it in the same position on the new unit. Now the new drive unit is ready to be placed into the cabinet. Position the unit's rails so they align with the cabinet's tracks. Gently slide the unit into the cabinet until the lock release engages. Be sure to keep all fingers away from any sliding areas. Go to the rear of the cabinet and reattach each of the cables and grounds to the unit. Begin by connecting the lead to the DC ground. Then reconnect all of the ribbon cables. Make sure they are fastened in place by locking each of them into the proper connectors. Check with the adjacent drive unit to make sure the connections are right. And last, reattach the power cable. In addition, be sure the ground lead is properly connected. Return to the front of the cabinet and restore the circuit breaker located on the front of the power supply. Then, locate the DFC power control pack and engage the alarm cutoff and test key first then the on switch to power up the DFC. The DFC is powered up as soon as the off LED extinguishes. Now power up all of the drives controlled by the same DFC by depressing the on switch that is associated with each drive unit. Notice that both the alarm and off LEDs extinguish. At this point, make sure the new drive unit is at room temperature. If not, wait two to three hours before going on to the next step. When the drive unit has temperature stabilized, spin up all of the drives on the same DFC series. This is done by depressing the start button on each drive unit, then waiting for the start LED to flash. As soon as the LED goes to a steady lit mode, the drive is spun up. However, if the LED does not stop flashing, the new drive is probably defective and will need replacing. To ensure all of the procedures have worked up to this point, return to the terminal to initialize the new moving head disk first and then restore the remaining units. Once all of the drives are restored, obtain a printout of the defect table listing from the ROP. This message resembles the original defect table stored inside the new drive unit. When the printout is completed, remove it from the ROP and compare the printout with the second copy of the original defect table. 
If there is any discrepancy between the documents, the new drive unit may have been defective. If so, repeat the entire procedure. Remember, before performing this procedure, always follow the steps that are outlined in both the manual and local procedures. And make sure that at least two persons are on hand to move the drive unit. Although the actual replacement procedures are the same for every 340 megabyte moving head disk drive, keep in mind that they may vary when servicing different types of equipment.